So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 subject test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. Two, a function is said to be even if f of x equals f of negative x, which of the following is not an even function? So, if you forgot what an even and an odd function are, they're telling us right there, they're saying f of x is the same as f of negative x. So what does that really mean? That means that if we have a function, we put x into it, what we get out is the same as what we would get out if we put the opposite of x, negative x, into it. So let's really think about that for a minute. You have some function f, and what's a function? It takes an input and it, and it drives an output, right? So most functions that we work with take in x as the input, and they put out y as the output. So that's what the function does normally. But we're interested in what it does in this special situation where it's an even function or an odd function or whatever. So if you have a function f that takes in negative x into the function and it spits out y, right, it doesn't care. It's like it took in x and it put out y, but then we put in negative x and it still put out y. That's called an even function. What's an example of that? An example of that would be something like f of x equals x squared. If you put in 3 into that, you get 3 squared, which is 9. If you put in negative 3, you get negative 3 squared, which is still 9. So an even function doesn't care if you put in x or its opposite. An odd function does. An odd function, if you put in... Um, if you put in the opposite of x, you get the opposite of y. So let's separate that out. This all is all about even function. An odd function, if you put in negative x into the function, you get out negative y. That's an odd function. And an example of that is an odd power. Suppose you had some function f of x equals x cubed. Now if you take f of 3, you get 27. But if you take f of negative 3, you get negative 27. So the answer is, so you put in the opposite value of x, you get out the opposite value of y. So that's just a quick review of even and odd. And not all functions need to be even or odd. Many functions are neither. So these are two special cases. And we can really just test these answers to see which ones are even. By the way, another uh, trait of even functions is they are symmetrical about the y-axis. So if you want to use your calculator, you can graph each of these. So let's use our x squared example. x squared is a parabola up like that. And if I drew it a little better, you'd see that it's symmetrical about the y-axis. So that's a dead giveaway that it's an even function. Um, OK, so y equals absolute value of x. If we put in a number or its opposite, we'll get the same thing there, right? y, absolute value of 3 is 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is still 3. So that's definitely even. And we're looking for the one that's not even. So we eliminate a b, y equals secant x. What is secant? Well, secant x is 1 over cosine x. And cosine turns out to be an even function. And sine turns out to be an odd function. So if cosine is an even function, 1 over an even function is still an even function. So secant plays just like cosine does. That is to say that it is an even function, so we'd eliminate that. Another way to remember that, for those of you that have had trig, you can think about the uh, unit circle. If you have some angle in the first quadrant, like suppose this is 45 degrees, and you say, hey, what's the cosine of 45 degrees? You don't even have to remember what it is, but, it, but if you do remember, it's uh, cos 45 is root 2 over 2. Then ask yourself the question, hey, what if I took the negative of that angle. Instead of 45 degrees, how about negative 45 degrees? That's down here. What would be the cosine of negative 45 degrees? Well, because cosine 
deals with the x-axis, the cosine value of negative 45 degrees is the same as the cosine value of 45 degrees. It's still root 2 over 2, and they're both positive because they're both in the positive x direction. The sine of 45 would be the same magnitude, but it would be the opposite sine, S-I-G-N, right? So the sine of 45 degrees would be root 2 over 2, but the sine of negative 45 degrees would be negative root 2 over 2. So the general takeaway here is that the cosine function is even and the sine function is odd. And try not to just memorize this. Try to really understand this on a unit circle basis. But if you want to just have that general takeaway there, that helps for now. And let's actually skip ahead to D now that we're talking about sine and cosine. That's kind of interesting. We have x squared, which we already talked about as being even, but then we have sine x. So sine x, we just said was odd, but x squared is even. So if you have these two terms, one of which is an even term and one of which is an odd term, the net result of the function is probably that it's going to be neither, right? It's not going to be even or odd because those two terms are going to do different things. And we're looking for the one that is not an even function. So I think D is looking like the best choice at this point. But let's just take a look at the others and make sure we can eliminate them. C we can eliminate because it's log of x squared. Even though we're probably, it's probably a little confusing to think about what the log is doing, you have x squared. So whatever value you put in for x, if you put in its opposite, it's going to get squared. And x squared is going to ultimately be the same regardless of if you put in x or its opposite. So this is definitely even. And the same logic applies to y. We have even powers. We have 3x to the fourth minus 2x squared. Uh, so those two terms are both even terms. And the 17 is always going to be 17. And you can test this too. If you put in, um, I'm not even going to do it, but if you put in 1 and negative 1 into this function twice, you'll see that you get the exact same thing both ways. So that's an even function. And um, Again, D is probably not an odd function. It's even and odd terms, but the net result is that the function itself is not even. It's neither. So D is the best choice. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.